Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. We're doing a kind of a quasi-Christmas special. This will be airing uh, this afternoon. It's live right now. It's going to be also airing Wednesday and Friday afternoon at 2 p.m. So you'll see a lot of the same things happen the next uh, the next week because I have it off next week. It's going to be a great week off. And so also MCAT, um, Missoula Community Access Television, will be closed all next week. Um, our regular hours are usually Tuesday through Friday from 11 to 7, depending upon whether or not we have an after school program in between that we might have to take a break from 3 to 5 but other than that we're we're not going to be closed all next week during our regular public hours but uh, we'll be right back after, as soon as uh, January uh, um, January 3rd comes around but let's talk a little bit about weather so oh let's talk about what I'm going to talk about today I have a lot of stuff I got flags for Friday I got uh, some of the new movies that are coming out so I have my pre-critic I got a special holiday video um, I have a city council report and they're talking about bike and pedestrian trails and connectivity in Missoula um, I got new programs that are gonna be airing on MCAT throughout this weekend I got events for your uh, holiday break and also, if we have enough time, we'll talk about First Night Missoula, but let's talk about weather. Weather, we have a winter advisory warning happening throughout Christmas, and it's definitely going to look like a white Christmas happening this weekend. So if you guys are planning on doing any last-minute traveling, be aware that there is that winter advisory warning. Um, I got this from the National Weather Service, and you can. Um, it is currently 10 degrees outside. You know, you have 30% so chance of snow tonight, uh, going up into 90% uh, on Saturday. And then your high is going to be in the to the twenties, and your low is going to be to fifteens and teens. But uh, tonight's going to be a fairly warm night for uh, weather. And let's talk about uh, what what you guys can expect in terms of the snow report. So here's a nice little list: uh, Whitefish Mountain Resort. They got uh, seven fresh inches of snow in the last seventy two hours. Uh, the Black Tail Mountain Ski Area had six inches. Uh, Montana Snow Bowl didn't get any new snow, but it looks like it's green to go. Big Sky Resort looks like it got one inch in the last 72 hours. Uh, Trenton Pass Ski Area Resort is four inches in the last 72 hours. Lost Trail is 10 inches in the last 72 hours. And it looks like it's all green to go. Green Divides green to go. Bridger Bowl, no new fresh snow this little next uh, couple of days. But of course, you can expect fresh snow to be happening throughout the weekend. And you can double check by going to onthesnow.com to find out all your weather reports and what's going on with your weather. But let's talk about news. Uh, in Missoula, there was a body found at the Clark Fork River Wednesday afternoon, and the body uh, belonged to a 44-year-old Amy Dixon of Superior. The body was identified um, just last night. Uh, when the runner, uh, ru the body was found uh, when a runner happened by uh, Taco John's, the, the running trail just behind Taco John's um, off Broadway. The cause is unknown, but the uh, uh, officials say that the death was not suspicious. Um, and I got this information from NBC Montana and the Missoulian. Um, in, in state, um, let's see, a Montana company has been, give been given license to build a $1 billion, 400 megawatt wind farm um, power project. Um, the Bozeman company will build in Martindale, Montana, a town of no more than a hundred people, when the wind doesn't uh, when the wind doesn't supply the demand for power, then the company will provide a hydropower as backup. Uh, from a couple years back, Missoula was talking about wind power in the backyards of some folks, which, according to state law, could only be allowed to generate X amount of power, and they couldn't provide power for like their neighbors and whatnot. Um, something like this means a good step forward for Montana being more of an independent um, power. Um, the project will cost um, $173 million annually for maintenance and costs and you know paychecks and stuff like that. To operate and produce power, the value is at $220 million a year for uh, projected profits from their company, according to the license. Uh, so far, the power uh, capability is as much as 665 megawatts, which if I did the math, would power more than 11 million 60 watt light bulbs. Just think about that, um, and that in terms of just how much the wind power is going to be. And this is a Bozeman company that's going to be building in Martindale, um, hopefully in the next couple of days. Um, I don't want to sound too biased, but it's you know anything that's innovative and things that move things forward, I'm all for. I'm totally for. Um, in uh, national news, big milk companies are at war about what they can call milk and what they cannot call milk. With uh, manufacturers of almond milk or rice stream and the products. Uh, that uh, rely that reply that milk is a broad term 
and cannot, can be applied for any like milk-like substances. Just think about milk-like substances. That's how they, but of course many already have changed from insert milk here to insert non-dairy beverages. Uh, but many milk farms and milk producers want the FDA, Food and Drug Administration, to draw the line somewhere, which they have ignored and plugged their ears going la la la, not listening. Um, that, and I got that information from NPR News. In the world, uh, the Tunisian national sought to, in connection with the Berlin truck attack that killed 12 people and injured dozen, have been shot dead in Italy, according to Italy's interior um, minister. Uh, Antonio de Lusu, um, Milan's police chief, said, um, let's see, let's see. Emery traveled, uh, so this, the person in, uh, in a routine stop, the, now, the, the man now being identified as Anis uh, Amri, uh, opened fire to police until he was shot dead. Um, and they tra he traveled, uh, after he left uh, Berlin, he traveled through France before arriving in Milan, Italy, and the train arrived at about 1 a.m. local time f this morning. Um, and then before the uh, Berlin, Berlin attack, he uh, made a video saying that he, uh, he his alliance to the terror group before the Berlin attack. And many fingerprints and videos have linked um, Anis uh, to the attack. And now uh, the questions of what to do next are being answered. So that's just what you guys need to know in terms of what's happening in the world locally and in and around Montana. Cool little wind farm, um, tragedy uh, on the Clark Fork River. And also we uh, got a milk war happening in the nation uh, along with the uh, Berlin attack. So moving on, we got uh, a nice video to kind of bring you into the Christmas spirit. So I made a nice little uh, video for you guys. So when we come back, I will talk about what are some of the new movies out there that you may not want to see. Kids, kids, come gather. Oh, oh, ouch. I have something to show you. You can come out! Come on! You see here, kids? These are kids from another planet. Uh, space germs. Sorry, I don't want to shake your hand because I don't want to get diseases. It's the beginning of flu season. You might as well get it now so you don't have to get it later. Okay, I suppose. Oh, this is weird. Okay, you can let go now. Pretty nice, huh? No, not really. Homeschool kids are weird. Now, kids, I have a very special treat for you guys. Uh, I'm already overstimulated. Oh, yeah, Christmas doesn't come too soon for you kids. Ho, ho, ho! Uh... Um, you guys want to hear a fart joke? <laughs> <laughs> Everything is great with farts. I hate it when we laugh because we're laughing. <laughs> Where did I park my sleigh? <laughs> Come on, I used the sound of laughter. It, 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 it. You must have used fart humor. Brilliant! I'm happy about this, but yet I'm still angry. Let's go. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Just a quick little disclaimer. Um, <laughs> I have nothing against homeschool kids. Anyways, um, but moving on, let's talk about some of the uh, new movies that are coming out. Let me just get this all set up. Uh, the first movie I want to talk about is Silence. Um, when a ministry goes missing, uh, a ragtag group of Jesuit priests go to Japan to find him. Long story short, and I mean a long story, it's slated at 160 minutes. You can go to Great Falls in all that time and still be able to stop for gas. Um, anyways, I'm assuming they'll go to Japan, um, and they don't get accepted. Uh, but when their significant other, God, um, tells them they should just give it one more chance, they could bring Christianity to Japan. Yeah, this movie is, uh, that has people in it like, uh, the less than amazing Spider-Man, Kylo Ren, get character, and that guy who has that particular set of skills. And speaking of that particular set of skills, he provides his voice, uh, um, 
with his um, intense voice continuing in the Christmas opening weekend, we have Liam Neeson as the voice of a monster to a boy who loses everything only to find himself talking to imaginary monster tree Groot like creature which you know it's ba it's it's because i heard it's like uh watch this because i heard it was really sad and they don't pull any punches and to remind you just how much this kid's life sucks like this whole movie is just like this kid's just like going just to the ringer of just just awful just terrible things happen to him so so you guys can check it out it's called a monster calls uh, moving on um sing um, from the uh, people who brought you those minions and other stuff, I assume comes another reason for uh, furries to stand up and cheer, or um, in this case, sing. Um, sing is uh, playing in theaters, and you can um, expect that your kids will be inspired to annoy the living crap out of you during their holiday break. So break a leg. Um, next up, we got Passengers. Um, Another Jennifer Lawrence movie with Chris Pratt. Chris Pratt p plays second fiddle to a girl who only appears in the second act of the movie with a love that is kind of forced, but forced, uh, but you're forced yourself into watching a man die alone in space and then take a girl with him. That's let I me mean, long. That's a long story short. Like it's basically that. Um, if you've already seen the trailer, you basically saw the movie. It's 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 nothing like. Whatever. Anyways, um, of course, I have one more movie, and I didn't have a, n a nice little over-the-shoulder for you guys. Um, so this is a movie with James Franco, and he plays a 20-something-year-old zillionaire uh, with more money than anyone should really have, and he really flaunts it. So watch how he uses every excuse um, to hate him as he meets the parents of his girlfriend who can look past his quirks to see the big pile of money at the end of the yellow brick road. As you have noticed, uh, I didn't make any over the shoulder for the graphic. And uh, up next, we got an art clip for you guys, and it's a nice little art clip. This is the last time you guys will be able to see these. Um, and this is at the Museo Art Museum. I have both of them, and I'm gonna show both of them sometime in the show, but this here's the first part of your art clip, and this is all the art being featured by Steve Glucker. And that um, art installation at the Missouri M Museum will end at the end of the month. So um, go check it out. It's Steve Glucker's work. It's an interactive. You can touch the art. It's really cool. You got to got to check it out. Missouri Art Museum is free. Just go in there and be like, oh, this is cool. Crank, crank, crank. Oh, that's pretty cool. I didn't notice about that. Oh, wow. I'm really, uh, I didn't I didn't expect to be inspired. So that's what art is. You don't expect to be inspired. I think that's the new slogan. Art. Huh, I didn't expect to be inspired. Moving on, um, let's talk about some of the uh, stuff we can find out more information about me and my show. You can go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. You can subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. You can like us on our Facebook page. And you could follow us on Twitter at wakeupmissoula. MCAT.org is a great resource for you guys. It, it provides all sorts of fun little videos you can watch pretty much any time. You can just click on one, channel 189 to watch any of the videos on demand that, I will, that I'm going to show you guys in a second. But of course, um, the videos that I show you are community videos. People 
um, request MCAT to go out and shoot their uh, events, rallies, causes, uh, peace festivals, all sorts of wonderful things that I'm about to show you. And that's a little tease on what you guys are about to see in today's um, um, Meg's um, new programming here on MCAT. Um, if you want your Meg made or you want a video made by MCAT, you can call us at 542-6228. Otherwise, you can go to MCAT.org. You just click on it. All you got to do is go to go to forms. It's right under MIDI assistant grants. It's right there. You can't miss it. You go under forms. And if you have any problems, you can always call us at 542-6228, otherwise known as 542-MCAT. You can also email us MCAT at MCAT.org. But without further ado, here are some of the wonderful, great programming that we provide from Missoula for Missoula. And they were talking about when they were small, how they would follow this and go clear into the, what's called the Selway Bitterroot Wilderness behind uh, Hamilton, Stevensville. They would go there, then they would drop down, replenish supplies, come back. They'd go all the way around. Because in here, what we have is the Columbia River and the Snake River. Then it goes into the Clearwater. Then some will go into Salmon River, and that continues all the hit those tributaries all the way around. Okay, what what they did is they gathered the roots, the medicines, the berries, um, all of the, the the vegetables they had. People say, well, they were an all meat diet. No, they had a lot of vegetables: wild carrot, wild onion. Jean dressed the straw doll in some of her own clothes, a tank top with David Bowie's face silhouetted on it, a pair of sequin hot pants, knee-high leather boots. She gave the doll a nice old-fashioned stirring spoon, wooden, and stood the doll next to the stove in the kitchen. Then Jean packed a suitcase. She took all the Gordon Lightfoot records, the tequila, and her favorite jackknife, and walked out the door. She was 47 years old. Society that because of trade, that because of production and because of ownership and property, which I'm going to get to in a little bit, there are the haves and the have-nots. This is real. This is real in our country. We, we have a very kind of gr graded system where in the United States we're fortunate to have a very large middle class and a lot of comfort. People like us live very well compared to the middle classes or classes throughout the world. But the exploitation of resources has had a profound impact on a lot of humanity who is very poor. And they don't have the same set of incentives to be able to protect nature and deal with environmental services and pay for more because they're just trying to get enough food to be able to survive. <laughs> So whatever we have right now, it's the gratitude, the kindness of our ancestors, our forefathers, who have struggled and who have, uh, who have built the hardship of all these, uh, all these things, and that's what uh, the result that we are enjoying right now. And I'll have the rest of that video for you guys at the end of the show. And I think that's a really, uh, that's pianissimo at the tail end, the next little musical interlude. And I uh, really like that. I'm going to have that for your uh, moment of zen at the very end of the show. But first of all, let's talk about some, what's going on with the city? 
Um, so this is what happened at the Public Works um, Committee meeting. This is like the only committee meeting happened in the City Council, but I watched it. I was like, huh, this is really cool. And it's very interesting because um, there's a limited budget in terms of um, trails and um, bicycle paths to be made in Missoula. And a lot of their uh, budget was um, um, cut over the X amount of years and they have to work with what they have. But first of all, before we get to that, let's talk about uh, wastewater treatment. They hope to route all the facility power uh, via methane gas to power the building uh, because according to Star Sullivan of the um, wastewater facility, the, uh, the facility already heats about 50 to 60% of the energy provided is by the methane gas and adding it to 100%, this would also reduce the smell that comes from the wastewater treatment plant, but we can still expect Echo Compost to pro provide all those wonderful smells that we love so much. Um, the Bicycle Facilities Master Plan established a detailed strategy and project list for improving bicycling in Missoula and is guiding document for bikeway in implementation. Oof, big. Ugh, that's not even a big word. <laughs> the Bicycle Facilities Master Plan uh, supports the vision and the goals of both Missoula's Long Range uh, Transportation Plan and Active Transportation Plan. Um, the Bicycle Facilities Master, per Master Plan provides greater detail for achieving a more connected bikeway network that is more accessible and comfortable for Missoula residents. This is Ben Weiss, and he talks about the separation of pedestrian and bicycle paths. It often comes down to um, widths and, and right-of-way that we have or don't have uh, in place. It's something that we have looked at and um, some examples where we're experimenting with it kind of are like the Rux Trail between uh, Broadway and Front Street. There's a, I mean, we're calling them shared use paths instead of um, sidewalk and bike lane, but it's a wider sidewalk that is made to, to have both users on it. And I guess my question is more into the regard that people don't want, it, businesses especially, don't want to lose the ability to funnel traffic to their businesses, and so they don't want us to take up roads with extra bike lanes. So have we considered using it as a strategy to have a dedicated bike space and not add bike lanes to roads in areas where it's very narrow or anything like that. I, I guess I just want us to consider that as a strategy going forward because it, it kind of seems to make everybody happy and gives bikes a, a shared space. Since we have some roads where we don't have right away, we can't make them wider, mm -hmm. but... We probably don't have space on the sidewalks then, too, in those... Well, locations. the sidewalks exist already. I mean, they're already mm -hmm. there. It would just be something we would stripe... Because boulder sidewalks aren't any wider than ours in a, in a lot of places, and they just put mm -hmm. a stripe down the middle and kind of lets people know. I, I guess we can look into it, but I'd say that there are, um, there are kind of guidelines and standards on what counts a, as a trail with, you know, a, an okay width to have people sharing uh, space side by side, biking and walking. All right, so that was uh, um, Julie Armstrong asking the questions about um, what we can do to uh, kind of add that separation, but at the same time without uh, encroaching on certain areas as well. Um, Let's see, the city of Missoula has a lot of trails, which uh, many bikers use them. Um, sidewalks um, are for pedestrians, bikers, uh, <laughs> but many paths that are not suitable streets for bikes and pedestrians, but there's a lot of that. Stress plays a big part in these biking areas, and Aaron Wilson with Finwise talks about the areas that cause the most stress. So here is kind of like a little description along with a map of high stress areas shows roadways that are considered level of traffic stress one so that's low volume low speed um, and you can see how fragmented they are there's not a lot of connections there between those kinds of roadways those are just different area there really it's just a show up so this is one clump of low stress there's really no color coding for type of, of roadway it's just to show all of the different groupings of local streets or those low, low traffic stress. To show how separated they yeah, are. Yeah, to show the separation. Where I think that comes into place here, if you add in the, the trail system, so our commuter trails, the Bitter Trail and the Milwaukee, you start to connect some of those neighborhoods of, of low stress 
uh, facilities. But you still have a, all of these neighborhoods that don't have a good low stress connection from one to another. So that's kind of the basis for how um, we started evaluating, coming up with recommendations. How do we start to connect all of these groupings of, of neighborhoods with a low stress network? All right, so that was, uh, again, Aaron Wilson talking a little bit about how we can um, figure this out. But first of all, you gotta uh, assess the problem. And that's kind of what they showed you with that. And it judging by that map you guys just saw, it's like, oh, what, what, what's going on with this? It's like all sorts of crazy stuff going on there. Of course, the next big step for the Missoula bicycle facilities is to make a better network by connecting low stress areas with high stress levels to give those bikers who do not feel comfortable in high stress areas um, a choice, you know, like high peak traffic, you know, there's oncoming, uh, ongoing traffic, you know, like there's four lanes, uh, like there's two lanes going one way, all that craziness, especially on a reserve street. Um, you know, they, they have the whole like bike lane on reserve street, but you know, just think about it. It's of all those cars going at 45 miles per hour and it's ridiculous. Um, there's, it just gives them a chance to uh, work uh, with better ways to uh, go through the thing. And um, one of the, um, John Dabari, uh, one of the council members, uh, he talks about connectivity, and this is what he had to say about that. Wait, did I just delete that video? Yes, I did. I deleted. <laughs> Darn. <laughs> Sorry about that. But he said a lot of really good stuff too. Um, so let me just uh, just pop that thing back up. And I'll, I'll have to find it for you. Sorry, I'm just gonna um, actually look for it because it's the basis of the uh, the next couple comments where they talked about connectivity. Uh, let's see. I'll I'll do this quickly. This is a little bit longer. All right, here we go. All right, so here's uh, another big trail map, and here's a um, continuation of this is what John Debar says. We used to look at landscapes and how. Um Wild, how those landscapes support the ability of wildlife to move across them. Mm -hmm. Very little difference here, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. And so you employ this theory called percolation theory, and if you look at this map, uh, you would say that this landscape perks, but barely. So that means you can't get from the South Hills to uh, the top of the rattlesnake without some effort. And so I would say that if we're going to dedicate money to solving problems, we ought to figure out those places that are the biggest bottlenecks to making this landscape perk, rather than p picking the low-hanging fruit, unless they happen to coincide. So I, I think if you're looking at this from a network connectivity standpoint, and I think that's kind of what we want to be doing, um, that there's probably specific places that if you invested money, you'd get a lot of improvement. Yeah, yeah, I definitely agree with that, and I, I, I don't think this plan ignores that. There are a number of recommendations for, say, Brook Street, um, Higgins, you know, the, the big arterial streets, and you know what facilities might be appropriate there. But I think it also recognizes that those could be very expensive and big. I mean, when you think about Brook Street, it's a fairly narrow right of way, and there's. So I think the idea is that you, you know, not that greenways replace those, but that they complement each other. All right. So uh, basically, how um, Aaron Wilson um, replies to John DeBar's comment is that a lot of times, like, there's a lot of uh, really big projects that have to be done, but right now uh, they're going to try to figure out the uh, the quantity of projects of connectivity and connecting all these trails, rather than dealing with uh, one huge problem, which will basically decimate the money that they get um, from this as well. So um, here's Julie Armstrong, and she talks uh, about funding and uh, what Ben Wise talks about and how, how they get money and how much money this is gonna cost and um, whether or not this is gonna affect you or not. It's tight. And your funding sources have dried up significantly. I know this is a wish list. What, I'm sure we try to partner with developers and MDT and everybody who's building anything, trying to get everything improved, but what, when you look in the crystal ball, where's this money coming from for all these projects? Um, well, it's a, it is a combination. Like you mentioned, it's, uh, it's partnering with development that happens. It's um, the program that used to be called CTEP, uh, well, Surface Transportation and 
enhancement program, or I don't know what's the community transportation enhancement program. But anyways, that's now called uh, TA, Transportation Alternatives, and it's competitive. And so um, we do apply for um, that funding to, to get some of these projects. Uh, and I guess uh, in a perfect world, um, I would um, probably come and, and request uh, some amount of, of bike project money similar to how we do our sidewalk subsidy where we have a little bit uh, each year and we start tackling the plan and just moving forward. Uh, we have a sidewalk master plan that, we, um, that we're um, slowly implementing and that we would do this the same way and then also seek for the large innovative uh, grants such as Tiger or, or what else might come in its wake. But um, yeah, this is, it is a wish list and it is expensive, but um, some of the projects, especially some of the big ticket ones are, are happening as part of other projects. Russell, for example, is getting protected bike lanes and great trail connections and um, really will be um, easier to cross and easier to travel along uh, when that's all done and that's part of, that's built into the cost of that project. And um, one of the hopes with this is that by having this plan in place and adopted, we would, um, really be able to point to it when a roadway reconstruction project happens and just start roping the, the cost into the cost of the project. All right, so it's more of like a, uh, if the money becomes available, they'll do it. That's, long, that's, that, that's the short of it all. Um, the, this is the last quote I had for you guys. Uh, Marilyn Marler, uh, she uh, um, tacks on to what John DeBari uh, said about, um, you know, like trails and connectivity and what really resonated with her. Uh, as a cyclist getting around, um, I just think, you, you know, there's certain areas you don't even really think about biking over there because you have to cross over mm -hmm. a major street and maybe, I, I find biking on reserve is not that bad, you know, because there's a huge bike lane, but like getting across reserve, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a big mental barrier for me and some of the other like getting across Brook Street is kind of a, you know, a, a big hassle. And, you know, there might be a, a different way to, to strategize where those crossing points are instead of doing um, the low-hanging fruit, not that we shouldn't do those when we have the opportunity. So I just wanted to say that that really resonated with me. Um, the other one, uh, Julie's comment about how are we going um, to fund all of these um, I would just like to advocate for continuing to, um, not that you're not doing this already, but continuing to integrate with the other departments. And I, I feel like we're starting to get a little bit like, um, it's starting to go one way and I want it to come back that, you know, there's like the, the sidewalk program and the sidewalk subsidy. Um, and then there could be the, the bike facility program and subsidy and, um, and then there's just like regular street maintenance with, where we need curbs and gutter and I would really like to see all of those uh, working together more instead of specialties and I hope that we can have, we can continue having some conversation about that. But it's what I always just love to see big overview maps and I can tell a lot of work went into this and that is wonderful. All right, so um, the only way to connect these trails is to connect our hearts and, of course, we connect with all the other departments. I think that's very well said, and uh, that kind of is the moral of uh, uh, today's um, city council meeting. And there won't be any more city council meetings um, or any reports when I come back on January 4th. Um, so I'll, I'll try to figure out something to entertain you for a little while at least. Uh, the bicycle facilities uh, will be built uh, as the money becomes available and to compete uh, these projects will total 40 million dollars which will be paid um, which won't be paid I, I guess like it, that's how much they estimate the cost of just like ultimately connecting all these trails in the end but they will not like do any bonds or any kind of like money they'll just be like this is how much it costs um, We'll just try, when we get the money, we'll pay for this and that. So they're just trying to build a list and seeing which one they can do at a certain time. And depending upon which department is doing this kind of work at this particular time in which they could be like, oh, since you guys are doing that, can you uh, add this on here as well? And they're like, uh, okay, I guess we can do that. And that's basically the whole kind of like how they're going to do it. It's going to kind of try to figure out a way to work with other departments. In the short run, uh, $2 million will be for the intersection treatment. Uh, they have $2 million so far, and they're going to use it for intersection treatment, um, neighborhood greenways, so you know those nice little green uh, pathways for bikes. They're going to, you know, green concreted areas type of thing that they have downtown. They're going to be implementing those as well. Traffic calming, if needed, like, you know, those mini roundabouts. 
um, even though they're not really called roundabouts, um, I was told, uh, <laughs> and I totally forgot what they're called, and wayfinding. They're working with wayfinding, and if you haven't already seen a bunch of those little signs that point into historic areas in Missoula, just like in the downtown and local areas, they're going to work with wayfinding to um, improve like uh, directional and mileage in terms of uh, little uh, signs for you guys. Um, when you're going on the bike trails and you're like going, oh man, how, how much longer to this park? It's like, oh, th three, four miles to this park? Oh, that's great. Oh, I'm glad these put these signs in. That's what Wayfinding is gonna do with them. Um, so you can find this map, the map and, and an interactive map at activatemissoula.com to find the draft plan in it and the interactive map on the plans for the bicycle projects. Comments will be accepted of the plan until 5 p.m. January 6th, so that you still have plenty of time to say your piece and say which trail needs more uh, work and which trail is like, okay, we can, we don't need to do it now, but we can we should really think about doing this trail a little bit later. So you can um, get in contact with them. They're the bicycle advisory board, and they meet pretty much every Tuesday at the city council in the city council chambers. It's TPACC meeting. And they talk about bikes and things pretty much for the whole entire meeting. Um, they plan to implement this master plan towards the end of January, beginning of February. They'll have more information. Um, you can always log on to ci.missoula.mt.us. You can always Google City of Missoula. But, whew, that was a lot of talking. And I have the another art video for you guys, and it is the... Uh, Courtney Blazon's um, art that's happening at the Missoula Art Museum, and you guys will only have a whole week or until uh, the end of December to watch, uh, to look at these art installations at the Missoula Art Museum. <laughs> Welcome back, guys. I have another video for you guys. It is Friday, and as always, we do Flagship Friday. And I believe this will be... I don't even, I don't even know how many um, Flagship Fridays videos I even have left for you guys. Um, but I'll be adding a couple more, uh, new Flagship uh, after-school programs in my... Uh, in my January spring, uh, I can say, I think it's like a winter spring session because it's like end of winter, beginning of spring session of the flagship program. Uh, I hope to bring back CS Porter Middle School this next uh, semester. Of course, they go by quarters in the um, MCPS school district, but it's um, once you go to college, it's like everything's in semesters. Like you just try to like, put it all in one chunk and it's just like ridiculous. But with that, but let's not talk about me let's just talk about the flagship friday video of the week and it's about uh too much television and too much uh uh watching too much just lounging around and watching tv uh, this is kind of awkward so without further ado here's flagship friday witches are dying every day by burnings hangings what and what not it's really sad as a witch to see witches burn and die, even if they aren't witches, which is why I am starting this foundation to stop the witch trials in Salem, Massachusetts. What else do I say? I'm Scott, and I got the workout just for you. 
Are you ready, boys? Ready! And one and two 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 and one and one. Oh, work the pain! No pain, no gain. One and two and one and two. The all new hoverboard, now 10% likely to catch on fire. Oh, shoot. Uh, oh, 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 I'm on fire. Help, oh, God. Stop, drop, and roll. Stop, drop, and roll. Uh, oh, ow. He sure felt. Tell me what this is. It appears to be a clean piece of paper. What's it about? Yeah, I did not know what I was going with that for my character. I, 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 sometimes the kids just want me to be in it. I'm just like, all right, I'll just make the best as I can from it. And then when I was watching, I was just like, oh, yeah, why would I? Why, why would I? But um, again, here's another uh, segment of why would I? Um, it's time for your events. And let's talk about what's happening for your Christmas weekend. Uh, you know, if you uh, if you guys are sticking around Missoula, especially this time of night, day and night, um, this afternoon, at Friday at 3 p.m., Skate with Santa. You guys get to skate with Santa. Uh, Santa is coming to town, and on his uh, Zamboni, mm, that's stupid, uh, <laughs> join Santa at Glacier Ice Rink on Friday, December 23rd, for an afternoon of fun skating. Skating begin at 3 p.m. with Santa arriving at 3.30 p.m. to skate with kids and post for photos until 5.30 p.m. Admission is $7 for adult and $4 for youth under 18 and seniors over 64. Skate rentals are $3. On a totally unrelated note, Glacier Ice Rink is looking for a Santa. Skating skills a plus. Uh, moving on, Tango Practica. So it's uh, pra it's Tango Practice. Um, Downtown Dance Collective is hosting uh, Tango. Students of Downtown Dance Collective and those who are curious can attend these practice sessions. Come and check it out if you if you want if you like what you see. Sign up for the class. Uh, the title was cool enough for me to highlight in events as well. Um, it's a it's a wonderful life. It will be playing at the Roxy Theater, which. Definitely is one of my top uh, Christmas movies of all time. Only because it's one. Well, actually, it's more of my top uh, Christmas movie. Is, is it on? I was like, I uh, might as well watch it. Because my definitely my favorite um, Christmas movie of all time is a Christmas a Muppet Christmas Carol. I definitely love that stuff. Just growing up, you know, Muppets, Muppets, just like talking puppet things and they're singing about Christmas Carol. Michael Caine's in that movie. It's ridiculous. He's a Ebenezer Scrooge. Everyone else is a puppet. Um, <laughs> it's, it's such a trippy movie. Um, uh, but of course, uh, the Roxy Theater will be hosting It's a Wonderful Life uh, at 7 p.m., part of their um, winter uh, a holiday uh, series uh, at the Roxy Theater. So you can check that out. Uh, George Bailey wishes he had never been born. An angel um, is sent to Earth to make George's wish come true. George starts to realize that how many lives he has changed and impacted and how they would be different if he was never there. Um, Saturday, Christmas Eve events. 
Uh, oh wait, let me just talk about. Just ignore me for a second. I'm just going to talk about all the music stuff that's happening tonight. Um, Irish music session at the Union Club at starting at 6 p.m. You get to hang out, play some Irish music with a bunch of people who always show up. Anyways, uh, drink beer and just chill out. Um, Tom Catmull will be playing at the uh, Missoula Brewing Company, the uh, Highlander Tap Room. Um, Jeff Carroll, 6 p.m. at the Montana Distillery Bluegrass uh, VFW Holiday Show. Uh, with pale people, I'm assuming there are going to be pale people there. Uh, most likely, it's heavy metal music type stuff, and that's going to be at 9 p.m. Uh, these the, the rest of these are at 9 p.m. So, and then Band in Motion at the Union Club at 9:30 p.m. Pay Dirt will be at the Sunrise Saloon, and I'm pretty sure they'll be playing uh, as well on Saturday night. Um, the Cold Hard Cash Show will be playing at uh, 10 p.m. at the Top Hat Lounge, which definitely I love the Cold Hard Cash Show. It's a Johnny, Ca Johnny Cash cover band, which was also featured on David Letterman. And blah, blah, blah. I don't want to like um, talk more about <laughs> how great this band is. Go see them. Um, <laughs> moving on, here is some of your Saturday Christmas Eve events. So if you guys don't have any plans for your Christmas Eve or if you want to do something during Christmas Eve, it's the uh, first annual <laughs> first annual <laughs> if you guys don't understand why I'm laughing it's it's because uh, first annual implies that they'll be doing it annually but at the same time it's like you really can't say annually until you have the second year done so you can just say first or just say just call it um, the INBC kegs and eggs um, engineering brewing um, company and ninja Mike's food truck proudly present the first annual <laughs> kegs and eggs events and then, of course, you can join them from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. for a local craft beer and locally sourced breakfast. Uh, holiday specials include uh, $1.50 off growlers, fills, um, one free beer per person with a growler fill, ooh, and $1 off locally uh, sourced breakfast from Ninja Mike's with the purchase of an INC, INC, it's the um, Imagination Brewing Company Growler. Um, holiday ice skating is continuing on with uh, Glacier Ice Rink at noon. So get in the holiday spirit with your skate among uh, snowbanks, trees, and lights during the Winter Wonderland Holiday Skating Rink. Um, and, of course, they've extended public skating hours. And when you're done, you can warm up with hot chocolate. And admission is $6, $7 for youth and seniors. And skate rentals are $3. Christmas Eve candlelight service at River Valley Church. Please join the River Valley Church to celebrate Christmas with the carols sung by candlelight. Hot cocoa and cookies provided for all. Festival begins at 6 p.m. at the River Valley Church. Christmas Eve candlelight and carols six, at 7 p.m. A small intim um, intimate group gathering at the... Um, coming through Christ, through music, scriptures, and friendship, there will be an infor informational reception following at 8 p.m. Drink, snacks, and goodies. And it's, uh, yeah, that's, uh, uh, wow, it doesn't even really say where it's at. Never mind. <laughs> Here's some, oh, yeah, events are just terrible. Uh, here are some of your Saturday Christmas Eve events. Uh, Travis Yost will be playing at the uh, Mizzou Brewing Company um, at 3 p.m. tomorrow Christmas Eve. Um, karaoke at VFW Xmas Edition. So you have uh, VFW Hall. They're doing uh, a nice little uh, Christmas karaoke day if you want to hang out and sing Christmas carols. Absolutely with Chris Moon will be at the Ballander on Christmas Eve night. Pay Dirt again will be at Sunrise Saloon. So if you miss it tonight, you can always watch it tomorrow night at the Sunrise Saloon. Nice little country band for your nice little country bar. Um, Let's see, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it. Sunday, if you guys are not doing anything Christmas Day, or not spending with family, and don't have any plans, um, Roxy Theater presents A Wonderful Life once again, 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. Um, they'll be running that movie pretty much all day at the Roxy Theater, so if you guys have nothing going on on your Christmas Day, you guys can always check that out at the Roxy Theater. But other than that, everything will be closed, so do all your uh, shopping today and tomorrow. Get all your groceries. Get all your food. Just so you don't get like, I was like, ah, I want to go out to eat tonight. I was like, oh, Christmas Day. I can't go out to eat. Um, let's see. How much time do I have? Events done. Okay, so I have about 10 minutes or so left in events. And I have a nice little uh, um, cheat sheet for you guys in terms of your first Friday. Uh, not first Friday. First night in Missoula. I always get that confused because first Friday is every first Friday, well, first night in Missoula is the, the, the night of uh, New Year's Eve, which is happening on a Saturday night, which is gonna be ridiculous for a lot of people who wanna get out and go crazy, crazy drunk, but first night in Missoula is all about alcohol-free fun, 
and it's mostly family fun in downtown Missoula, put on by the Missoula Cultural Council, now Art Missoula, which you can go to artmissoula.org to find this wonderful little um, cheat sheet on exactly where to go and when things are happening. Uh, Courthouse Lawn will kick off the uh, uh, ice um, carving and display for the new 2017 ice sculpture. Um, there's a bunch of down down dance. There's a dance down dance collective movement workshop starting at 12. You get all sorts of shenanigans at Fact and Fiction. I'm assuming some kind of like reading and whatnot. Dana Gallery doing a bunch of stuff. Currents is doing a bunch of stuff uh, with Free Swim and all that stuff. And most of the stuff all because you guys and I have a nice little button which is $15, and I believe it's like $18 for uh, the day of all your events. And then. You have all the stuff that's happening in the UC Center, otherwise known as the University Center, 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 Center. And the Rock City Theater will be doing a Kung Fu movie marathon. Definitely one of my favorite things going on here as well. And I do believe uh, that uh, Christian Ackerman will be doing a, um, a mime show. And every year he does a mime show, which I do not believe. Um, I, I'm not going to look for it because I, I want to save you guys a little bit of time. But you can also find all of these... Um, First first night Missoula events happening at missoulaevents.net. You just type in search events and go to first night. And look at all this. Look at all this. Like an endless, endless. Just so much stuff you guys can do. So many things that are going on. And all it takes is a $15 button or $18 button day of. And you get basically you get into all these things, all these performances, all this stuff, and it'll all end at the University Center, otherwise known as UC Center, University Center, 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 all happening. Um, they have um, Drum Brothers are going to do a countdown in the UC Commons, um, and of course, Ed Norton Big Band, which is like a huge big jazz band that's here in Missoula, made by a lot of the professional musicians that have been coming out of uh, University of Montana and more for the past 40, 50 years, and you get to check it out uh, first night with over hundreds of years of musical uh, big band experience. Um, that's at University of Montana, and it's in their ballroom, and you guys can count down the New Year's. I know I'm going to be there. Am I going to see you there? I don't know, because I don't even know what you look like, because to me, you look like a camera that's like staring at me and just like sucking up my soul. But anyways, uh, Merry Christmas, guys, and I hope you guys have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas time and also a New Year's time, and I have a nice little, cute little ending for you guys, and um, I'll see you guys January 4th. I want to say January 4th, but I'm not entirely sure. So for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp, and here is Pianissimo. Pianissimo. <laughs>